Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening whenever you're watching this. This is our next midweek meditation, and uh, uh, we'll be sharing uh, some readings from the books I've shared with before. And uh, yes, my hair is all cut off. I'll, I'll have to wait till the barber's open before I let it grow out and uh, look as nice as it did before. Uh, we're reading uh, first from Alan Jones' Soul Making, The um, Desert Way of Spirituality. He is uh, writing about what he calls the 50th gate. He writes, If the world is to change, then first I have to change. The way I change, often kicking and screaming, is by coming to the 50th gate, what he calls the 50th gate, where the abyss of faith is located. I believe in a new way not by suppressing the questions and doubts that I cannot go back to, but by living more and deeply into the questions and the doubts. In this, my fear and anger are useful, provided I'm able to resist the first panic impulse to run. If I stand still in whatever cave I've been pushed into, my anger and fear can be a means to my understanding more clearly and with precision what is going on, not only within me, but in the world. The desert tradition permits me to be angry with God. The Jews, the perfect pioneers of this tradition who were formed into a people in the desert, know how to be angry with God and with good cause. One rabbi said this to a person struggling in anger with his suffering. I know there are questions that have no answers. There is suffering that has no name. There is injustice in God's creation. And there are reasons enough for man to explode in with, with rage. I know there are reasons for you to be angry. Good. Let us be angry together. Jones writes, Doesn't God reveal himself in the areas of our greatest weakness, in our questionings, our probing, our suffering, and our anger? I believe he does. This is why the questions are important. They stretch and enlarge the heart so that it is capable of receiving a deeper revelation. They expand our horizons. It would be strange if we didn't find this enlarging and expanding process deeply disturbing. The simple truth is that reality reveals its secrets to us in proportion to the level of our willingness to ask questions. We receive answers to fit the kind of questions we pose. If our questions are narrowly and unimaginably conceived, the answers will be too. And he concludes, In a world where there is no room for doubt, ambiguity or questioning, there is no room for genuine faith. I found this little devotion in Mark Link's Vision 2000, praying scripture in a contemporary way. He reads, he, he um, quotes from John fourteen twenty one. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever accepts my commandments and obeys them is the one who loves me. I too will love him and reveal myself to him. An old legend talks about an angel walking down the street, Mark Link writes, carrying a torch in one hand and a pail of water in the other. What are you going to do with those, someone asked. The angel replied, With the torch I'm going to burn down the mansions of heaven, and with the pail of water I'm going to put out the fires of hell. Then we shall see who really loves God. The angel's point is that many people keep the commandments more out of fear of punishment or hope of reward than out of love for God. He asked the question, What is the biggest reason I keep the commandments? Fear of punishment, hope of reward, or love of God. He ends with a German proverb, The hand will not reach out for what the heart does not long for. I wrote a song uh, recently, uh, well, just last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm calling it a Pentecost hymn for our time. And uh, it's a familiar tune. I'm going to sing it for you. And uh, in a couple of weeks when we celebrate Pentecost, we'll sing it together in our online worship service. 
When troubles come and I'm alone, I turn to God, who is my home. I cast my fears and all my cares on one who all my burdens bear. On Pentecost so long ago, Disciples came to pray and show to all around that they believed and peace and power they did receive. We are not gathered in one place. We feel apart and seek your face. May you come now into our hearts, all loneliness will then depart. When we once more together come, we'll sing and praise you all the more. Your Spirit has sustained our souls and brought us back into your fold. We praise you, God, who made us one. We praise you, Christ, God's only Son. The Spirit, too, we also praise with hearts and hands and voices raised. Our prayer from a diary of private, private prayer by John Bailey. O Lord and maker of all things, from whose creative power the first light came forth, who didst look upon the world's first morning and see that it was good, I praise thee for this light that now streams through my windows to rouse me to the life of another day. I praise thee for the life that stirs within me. I praise thee for the bright and beautiful world into which I go. I praise thee for earth and sea and sky, for scudding cloud and singing bird. I praise thee for the work thou hast given me to do. I praise thee for all that thou hast given me to fill my leisure hours. I praise thee for my friends. I praise thee for music and books and good company and all pure pleasures. O thou who thou selves art everlasting mercy, give me a tender heart today toward all those to whom the morning light brings less joy than it brings to me, those in whom the pulse of life grows weak, those who must lie abed through the sunny hours, the blind who are shut off from the light of day, the overworked who have no joy of leisure, the unemployed who have no joy of labor, the bereaved whose hearts and homes are desolate, and grant thy mercy on them all. <clears throat> o light that never fades, as the light of day now streams through these windows and floods this room, so let me be open to thee the windows of my heart, that all my life may be filled with the radiance of thy presence. Let no corner of my being be unillumined by the light of thy countenance. Let there be nothing within me to darken the brightness of the day. And let the spirit of him whose life was the light of all rule within my heart till eventide. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed our midweek meditation and I look forward to um, presenting the worship for this upcoming weekend. And I'm looking forward to the time when we can gather together and worship again. There'll be some more information in our weekly word this week and in coming weeks about uh, what uh, will transpire as the state of Pennsylvania begins to reopen and we are allowed to worship again. It'll require some different ways of doing worship for us as a community of faith, but uh, I am, I'm looking forward still to when we can gather together as a community again. God bless you. Take care and uh, be safe. Bye-bye.